Disgusting. I think disgusting is an appropriate word to describe the weather that we are forced to sail through. Strong winds and heavy rain reduced the visibility almost to zero. Even if there was a ship nearby, I doubt I would be able to see it. How are we supposed to find targets in these conditions? We would need a lot of good luck. Or a bit of help from above. Rolf, you have the bridge. I'm going to finish some paperwork. Neuer Funkspruch, Herr Kaloin. Bootsman Huxel, I take it that you are sure that you have made no mistake while decoding this radio message, because this is an interesting one. Apparently there is an enemy ship in our patrol area. Pass the message to the navigator. He will figure out where exactly the target is and where it is going. You have marked the target's position on the map? Okay. Let's calculate an intercept course together. Hello there, and welcome to a new episode of our amazing Silent Hunter 3 campaign. We are of course playing with the 1LX edition of the GWX mod, and today I am going to show you how to calculate an intercept course when you receive a radio report about an enemy contact. Let me show you what I mean. If we go to the map, you can see that there is an enemy marked here. This is because we received a report about that enemy. That enemy has been scouted by some means, either by airplane or by intercepting a radio transmission from that ship. And so, this information has been radioed into us and we will try to intercept it. Here's what we know. About 25 minutes ago, this ship was roughly in this position, with a course going north-northeast at a medium speed. We of course are still in quadrant AN41 patrolling east of the Orkneys here. The conditions for us today are extremely difficult. Let me show you really quick. If we go to the observation periscope and take a quick look outside, it's, it's downright terrible to be honest. Visibility is extremely limited due to the rain and, uh, well, general storm that is raging outside. So we will most likely not be able to identify the target from far away visually. We will have to rely on our hydrophones and on our map drawing skills to accomplish this. Calculating intercept course is very easy. Let me show you how it's done. First of all, we need to pay attention to the time. The target was in this position at 1.40. That is now half an hour ago. I want to know where this ship is right now. So let me bring down uh, this chart here. This chart will tell us how far the target has traveled in half an hour. Since they reported a medium speed I estimate, once again, this is just estimation, I estimate that the target is traveling at a speed of 7 to 9 knots. So I'll simply go with 8 to have a general idea. If the target is traveling at 8 knots, then in half an hour it has traveled almost 7.5 kilometers. So this is the first thing that I want to do. I want to mark the target's new location. And we did say, uh, we need to zoom in for this. We did say that they are traveling north northeast. So if they were traveling simply northeast, you would of course choose 45 degrees. But since they are traveling north northeast, that means I will go with uh, 22 and a half for good measure. And we did say almost seven and a half kilometers. So, something like this is perfectly acceptable. So, this is where we suspect our target is right now. Of course, due to the great work of our navigator, we know exactly where we are. 
So we have that. Now, now we come to the fun part. Let me take care of uh, this line here. We don't need it right now and it would only confuse us. We take the protractor tool and we draw a line from our submarine to the position of the contact there and for the second leg of the protractor we draw out into the direction of travel of the contact so once again I will simply choose 22 degrees like now let me let me do it like this let's make the line a bit longer and we'll choose 22 there we go now you need to measure off along the line of travel of the contact you need to measure off a distance that is representative of the target's speed. So since we assume that the target is traveling at a speed of 8 knots, that distance that we measure off could be 8 kilometers, it could be 80 kilometers. It has to be something that, um, that is in relation to that speed. 80 kilometers would be a bit too far because the distances are not that great here. We are only about 30 kilometers away from the target at this point. So I'm going to go with 8 kilometers. So we measure 8 kilometers into the direction of travel, like so. Now you need to determine the following. You need to know how fast you will travel to intercept the target. I will of course surface the build. And on the surface I think I will be able to travel at the speed of about 11 knots due to the stormy conditions. So I will now take the compass tool, which lets me draw a circle. I'll go to the end of the line that we have just drawn. Ah, oh, come on. And now I will draw a circle with a radius that corresponds to the speed that I want to travel at to intercept the target. So I did say I will travel at 11 knots that means that I need to draw this air to 11 kilometers or to um, 110 kilometers if I had chosen to go with 80 kilometers for the, uh, for the line here. But I went with 8 so now I need to use 11. Always keep these things in relation to each other. Uh, there we... Oh, come on. There we go, good enough. Good. Take notice of where the circle intersects the line between our submarine and the contact, which is right here. Let's put a mark there. There we go. And now you will do the following. And this is now the, the part where, well, let's say the magic happens, so to speak because it is astonishingly easy once you get the hang of this. Good. So, we now go to... Uh, we select the protractor tool again. We go to the center of the circle that we have just drawn. This is where we start with this process. Center of the circle. Good. And now we draw this leg out to the point that we have just marked, where the circle intersects the line between our submarine and the um, contact. And for the second leg, we go towards the contact. There we go. And what this gives you is an angle of 27.5 degrees in this case. And this is your intercept angle. This is how far you have to lead the target to intercept it. Now actually, since we did reach our previous waypoint, our submarine is currently turning around. Uh, I don't want that. Let me fix that really quick. And then I'll continue showing you the magic of this method. There we go. So 27.5 degrees is our intercept angle. What I like to do is simply to once again grab the protractor tool and I will grab this corner. I will drag this corner out to the position of my submarine. There we go. 
And we did say that it is... Wait a second, it was 27.5, yeah? Yeah, 27.5. I drag this corner out to the position of my submarine. And then I... Excuse me, I'm trying to do this right. I take this leg of the protractor and I simply do the following. 27.5. This here, if I were to surface right now, and if I were to travel in this direction at a speed of 11 knots, then this is where I would intercept the target. But you have to keep one thing in mind. You don't want to be on a direct collision course with the target, so to say. You always want to lead the target a little bit. So that's what we are going to do. I will give myself a few more degrees, 31 degrees sounds about right, that has given me a bit more space to intercept the target and to hopefully be in front of it when we encounter it finally. That's the plan at least. Okay, with all of that done, let me adjust my course down to here. Surface the boat. Speed up. Good. Now we have to see if we can really achieve the speed of 11 knots on the surface. And this is, this is how you calculate an intercept course. It is surprisingly easy. It really is. Once again, let's go through the steps. Um, if the time is uh, has progressed already from this point in time that is reported here. Make sure to mark the current location of the contact, or well, your assumed current location of the contact. Then you think about how fast the contact is going. In this case, I assume that it's eight knots. You draw out a line with the protractor from your submarine to the contact and then for the second leg into its direction of travel. And on that line you mark a distance that corresponds to the target's speed. 8 knots, 80 knots, uh, sorry, 8 kilometers, 80 kilometers or 800 kilometers. If you are out in the Atlantic then going with 80 or even 800 is uh, something that you should consider because the distances then do get really big. So you have marked the distance on this line. Now you take the compass tool and you draw a circle that corresponds to the speed that you will travel at to intercept the target. And I stop battery recharge and speed up the boat further. Let's see if we can even reach 11 knots. Maybe I will have to redo this. So far it's looking good. Yeah, 11 knots should be fine, even in this weather. And the weather is terrible. Jesus Christ. Oh God. Oh no. <laughs> oh, lovely. Give me a weather report. 15 meters per second winds, heavy clouds, light rain, zero visibility. I can't see. Jack. Crazy. So, where were we? Yeah, you draw a circle that corresponds to the speed that you want to travel at. It will center it on the end of the measurement that you have taken uh, that corresponds to the target speed. So in this case, I've chosen 11 kilometers. Where this circle intersects the line between you and the contact is where you place a marker. You once again grab your protector tool and you draw uh, the first leg from the center of the circle to that position, to that marker, and for the second leg you draw right towards the contact, and that will give you the intercept angle. You can then go ahead and draw new lines, or you can simply use the protractor lines that you have just drawn to drag them out to your submarine and then to move this leg up until you know where the intercept point is. And then you give yourself a bit more room. And that's the whole beauty of it. It's not complicated. 
Very easy to do, very easy to follow. But, <laughs> there's of course a but. You have to take in mind something that is very important. The data that you have received here isn't super accurate. The course is only given with an estimated north-northeast. That can mean multiple things. If we take the ruler and simply go to here and draw out a line, let's actually do that just for fun. We draw a line out to north northeast. I did say that for that you have to draw to 22 and a half degrees. Sure enough, it looks like this. Here's the kicker though. Where does north northeast start and where does it end? Good question, right? So what I like to do is, I like to go from these 22 and a half degrees, I like to go 10 degrees uh, plus and minus to visualize this, just for reference, so to speak. By the way, did I, did I mess up this line? 20, 2 and a half, no, everything's fine, good. So, let's draw another line and I'll show you what I mean. 10 degrees plus would mean 32 and a half degrees. And just like that I will go 10 degrees minus, which means 12 and a half degrees. Since the course isn't giving super precise, I think, and that is very important, the target will not be exactly on this line. It will be somewhere on one of the infinite amount of lines that are in between these two. So when we do intercept it, it will be somewhere in this area. And that area is 10 kilometers across at this point. But if we were to make this intercept maybe over here, that would already be almost 20 kilometers across. Keep that in mind. The target course is not given in precise degrees. Now same for the speed. The speed was given as medium. What if the target is going faster than 8 knots? What if it is traveling at 9 knots? Those are things that you need to worry and those are things that can cause you to miss the target. And, of course, you can also miss the target because it simply changes course or speed. That can always happen. This ship is now traveling this way. In five minutes, or even right now, the ship, which is maybe uh, right here, could right now be making a turn towards the northwest. And our interception efforts would be completely um, wasteful. It wouldn't amount to anything. Will that happen? We'll see. For now, we are on the surface, we are traveling at a much faster speed than I would have imagined. Jawohl, Herr Slow down the boat a bit. Große Fahrt voraus. We are burning way too much fuel that way. We can go a bit slower. And we will now simply continue to go this way and hopefully meet the target in this area. Once we reach this area, I will dive the boat and we will keep our ears open. See you soon. Welcome back. Alright, we are now in the area. So this is the moment of truth. Did we do everything right? Did the target continue on this course? Or maybe did it change the course and it's going somewhere else? This is the moment where we find out. We are in the area, we are now diving. Jawohl, Herr Dive the boat. Tiefenruder auf normal tauchen. Bring us down, come on. The waves are incredibly strong, but this should be fine. We should be 
below the surface in a heartbeat. Come on, bring her down finally. Dive planes are fully negative. Man, I wish you could manually control the dive planes in Silent Hunter 3. Like you can in Silent Hunter 5 with the Wolves of Steel mod. It would be so beneficial. Bring us down to 25 meters. Also, I need somebody on the hydrofern. Good, we are getting there. Slow down the boat. This will allow our hydrofern operator to listen without being obstructed by the sound of the engines too much. By the way, I should change out the engine crew just to make sure that we have a fresh crew on standby if we should need it. Let's go to the hydrophone station. Do you have something for me? Come on, find something, please. While we are waiting for him to find, hopefully find something, let's do something else really quick. We know the target was here at 140. Yes, that is one and a half hours ago. Let me do the following. If it was traveling at 9 knots, that would... Let me put these two next to each other so that you, I can show you what I mean. One and a half hours ago, if it was traveling at nine knots, then we need to add the Contact six. Frachter. Ah, there we go. Okay, don't need you. The target is actually in the area. And we will take a good look at where this exactly. Bearing 6.5. Okay, this is not looking bad. Bearing 6.5 is here. So this way. So the target is somewhere on this line that we have just drawn. And it is for sure within this cone. That's interesting. I wonder... No, I don't know how fast the target is going. Otherwise, if I knew how fast it was going, I could now tell exactly where it is. Because I would simply see how far it has traveled in one and a half hours. And then I could mark the position. But this is, this is amazing. We have made contact. We know that the target is somewhere in the area. Let me go to the hydrophone and let me have a listen get an idea of how close it is. Oh wow. Stop the engines. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Steuerbordmaschine stopp. Backbord stopp. Can you hear it? It is very faint. It's chugging along, but at a slow speed. Fairly slow, I would say. Now I'm starting to believe that the target is traveling at 7 knots, maybe even just 6 knots. That's interesting. That is interesting. So here's what I'll do. First of all, speed up the build. We will surface. And we will travel in this direction. Six kilometers. Yeah, that should be fine. Let's travel six kilometers and then I will submerge the build again. And we'll have another listen. Then we should be closer to the target. 
Surface. Vorne oben 10, hinten kommen auch auf 5. Große Fahrt voraus. I really wish I could manually control the dive planes. Because here's the thing. Um, in Silent Hunter 5 with the Wolves of Steel mod, you have manual dive plane controls that you can use. And those will actually help you to avoid dying. It is not uh, that significant in Silent Hunter 3 maybe as it is in Silent Hunter 5, but when the dive planes are not at zero degrees, they are acting like giant speed brakes, so to speak. They are slowing you down. So it can be really beneficial to leave them at zero degrees when you are underwater, even when you are just traveling at a slow speed, and let the boat slowly sink, instead of your crew trying to lift the boat up because you are starting to sink slowly because you are going very slow and then the dive planes slow you down even more. That's something that I wish would be possible to manually control these things because of that. But alright, that's something that maybe, maybe, maybe one day will be added if we are lucky. Ah, I see, the weather is still terrible. Is it? Yes. Absolutely dreadful. How nice. Standard propulsion. Don't recharge batteries. That should give us a nice speed boost now. Okay. We'll travel these uh, five kilometers and then I will submerge again and we will re-establish contact with the target. And here we are, almost in position. Let's dive. Jawohl, Herr Kaloy. Tiefenruder auf normal tauchen. We are diving. Let's bring her down. Do bring us down to about 24 meters. Jawohl, Herr Kaloy. Neue Tiefe 2, 4. Awesome. We are slipping beneath the waves. Derzeitige Tiefe 1, 0. Good. Electric engines have been started. Nice. And we are descending rapidly. This is a really nice thing about the Type 7 submarine. Um, its diving speed is pretty decent. It's really good actually. Good, we are getting there. Our hydrophone operator should soon rediscover the contact. Let's go over to him. something for me. Let's slow down to make this job easier. Actually, full stop. Do you hear something? Let's ask him. No sound contact yet. The boat is still setting at the step, so... It's okay for him to take some time. I hope that the target didn't, uh, didn't pass us in the fog. That would be a bit embarrassing. Come on, you should find something now. OK, 
Okay, let me have a listen then. Dead ahead. It's actually dead ahead. Dead ahead of our submarine. At zero. Somewhere on this line. Okay, since the visibility is so ridiculously terrible up there, I think I won't... I won't surface. I might stay submerged and try to intercept them that way. My batteries are relatively full, so we do have the power to do this. It would help if this guy would be able to hear them. What's going on? Yeah, I clicked on warship, sorry. No sound contact. Oh, that's a bit weird. He'll get around to finding them. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Ein Drittel Fahrt voraus. Speeding up. And now we will simply steam towards them beneath the surface until we are in their vicinity. Or until we have worked out precisely which way they are going, maybe we will then surface and hop ahead a little bit. I have been tracking this target and, um, by the way, the hydrophone operator picked him up immediately after I uh, made the previous cut. I have been tracking this target now for a short while and we are definitely closing in. If I ask the hydrophone operator for a report, he's already reporting the target at medium range. Auf zwei. Kommt näher. It is passing from right to left across my bell. So I think I'll give it Jawohl, a bit Herr more lead. Neuer Kurs, eins, acht, null. And we'll bring Jawohl, the bird to periscope depth. Auf zero tief again. In preparation to surface and hunt them down. I still don't know what I'm facing. It could be... Well, the, the, the thing is, in these waves, in this storm, I needed to be a big ship in order for my torpedoes to have even a chance of working. If what we are hunting is some small coastal freighter, I can absolutely forget an attack. It won't work. But we'll see. For now, we are coming up to periscope depth. We are stabilizing the boat in the turn. Which is nice, excellent. Hydrophone operator should have the target back again in a moment. Let's see. Contact report. 9 degrees, medium range. Observation periscope. So this way. Let's see if I can already spot something. The answer to that is absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's nothing out there that I can see. We need to keep closing the distance. The question is how do I do this? Do I stay submerged or do I surface? If I stay submerged, I will have the advantage that I can keep tabs on the progress of the target. But I am a bit too slow to really get ahead of it. I might have to give myself a bit more lead here, actually. So let's go ahead and do that. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Neuer Kurs. Eins, fünf, drei. To make sure that we are really getting ahead of it. Frachter auf neun. Kommt näher. Hydrophone. Stop reporting until the turn has been complete. Uh, completed. Otherwise, this is gonna get really annoying. Okay, so here's the plan. 
The target is somewhere out here. Actually, somewhere out here, probably. I will keep closing the distance on this intercept course. And I will keep doing so until I can actually spot it through the periscope. Then I will know if the target is armed or not. If it is safe for me to surface and conduct a surfaced attack. Because I have zero firing parameters. I cannot employ my method that I used in the previous videos, where I plot the target's progress on the map. That is not feasible. I will have to use a different method to obtain firing data. Which one will that be? I don't know yet. We'll see. We will adapt to the situation. There it is. Visual. The ship is coming out of the fog. And I let it too much apparently, but there it is. Now I still can't tell what kind of ship we are looking at. But we will very carefully observe it. However, I do have a suspicion that it is a very small ship. And therefore completely unsuitable for an attack. Uh, let me switch stations here. Down observation periscope. We lower this one. So we are lowering this one. And we will be going up in the conning tower. Where we will sit on the attack periscope. That's a bit more stealthy. Target on 42 degrees. There it is. Oh, God damn it. That's a small fishing boat. That's just a fishing trawler. I believe that this is just a fishing trawler. That is just a fishing trawler. Hydrophone operator, I don't need further reports. Crap. We are not attacking this target, obviously, because um, I think they have a draft of about two meters, tops, two and a half maybe. You can see the bottom of the hull when it comes out of the waves. Yeah, look, look at that. That's any torpedo that I fire would pass beneath them. And due to the weather, I would have to set the torpedoes to at least 6 meters to reduce the likelihood of a torpedo failure. And I'm simply not attacking that ship with such settings. This is not happening, and due to the waves I can't use one of my deck guns. The deck gun itself, or the AA gun, both can't be used, they are mostly underwater, even if I surface. So, very unfortunate, but still, today's episode has taught us important lesson. I have been able to show you how to calculate an intercept course. I've been able to, well, to show you how I would approach a target in the fog that I have intercepted with this method by simply trying to get an intercept course right by listening to the hydrophone and listening to the bearing changes. If the bearing is getting closer to my bear, then I know the target is gaining on me and I need to change my course to, to increase the intercept angle. If the bearing is going away from my bow, then my intercept angle is already too great and I need to reduce it. And that's how you do it. And if you follow these steps, then even in heavy fog, you can absolutely find your target. No problem. What you can do when you do find the target, however, is a different story. We are not attacking this one. Shame, really. But maybe we'll find something else soon. For now, 
I want to thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, despite us not syncing anything today. And I do hope that you are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on any videos. Also, let me know in the comments if you maybe have a different method to calculate an intercept course. I'm always interested in such things. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I do hope that you have some amazing days until we see each other again. Until next time, goodbye.